Hello and welcome back to part four, which is the final video in our video series here dealing with the 80 back flame temperature. And so in this video, to round things out, we're going to code everything that we've talked about out so that we can find the specific flame of the temperature that sets our thing into a steady state situation, meaning that the enthalpy coming in is going to equal the enthalpy coming out. And so we're gonna to have to end up using a root solver to know that what is the exact flame of the temperature have to be so that the enthalpy coming in equals the enthalpy coming out, taking into account the combustion reaction of, of our products, including the excess air, which will lower the flame temperature of our flame during the combustion reaction on the Bunsen burner, um, as well as taking into consideration um, the, the heat capacity and how that's going to be changing over a range of temperatures and everything that we've discussed, we're going to go ahead and code that out now. And so the first thing we need to do is we need to bring in our chemical properties for the various reactants that we have in our combustion equation here. So we're going to do, um, what we're going to do here is grab a code here, a file which already has chemical properties laid out for the various reactants that we're going to be using. So go ahead and copy that here. Bring that over. Go ahead and have that. Now what that's doing is that's cloning it to our specific directory here. And so it's, it's bringing those tools in. And so we've got a bunch of properties now with all of their various specific chemical properties downloaded or cloned into our directory here and so we're going to want to access those tools now so we're going to import system here and we want to grab those tools so we're going to go ahead and set that up now there we go now let's go ahead and we're going to be using arrays throughout our coding here with everything we've been doing. So we're going to bring in our NumPy as MP. We're also, because we're going to be doing the root solver to figure out the flame temperature that sets the enthalpy in equal to the enthalpy out, we're going to need to use our SciPy Optimize, which has our root tool. And then lastly, we need to be able to use our tools, our chemical properties for the various reactants. And this way we can just type CHE each time. There we go. Okay, so now what we are going to do is have our, we're, we're gonna set a variable um, P, and P is going to just embody all the, the, all the chemical properties for the various reactants that we are interested in for this particular situation. So. So the properties for, and we've got methane, we've got ethane, in our fuel we have propane, and then we also have oxygen that we're concerned with, nitrogen, we also have carbon dioxide, and we have water. Okay. Now it's all loaded in. So now what we're concerned with in particular, so if I, if I press the dot, we have a whole long catalog of all the various properties for, well now these, these seven different compounds that we've imported in and or, or um, taken from our directory, we're <clears throat> specifically concerned with the heat of formation, right? The, the enthalpy of formation for each of these products at the standard state temperature. So what this is showing us here is for methane, for example, it <clears throat> um, at 298.15 Kelvin, um, well, it's, it's heat of formation here is exothermic, right? It's negative 74,000 roughly joules per mole. And so this is an exothermic reaction. Here's another exothermic. So anywhere we see a negative, we're having heat given off if the carbon was to then form with four hydrogens to make the methane. And then in particular we have, let's see, what are these? What are the two in the middle? 
uh, oxygen and nitrogen at 298.15 Kelvin are zero for their state of enthalpy for their heat of formation. Um, and so that uh, unloaded that properly, and so that's going to allow us to move forward with the next part of what we want to do here. So that leads us next to needing to <clears throat> set up a, a function, define a function that is going to take for us the uh, heat capacity that we found out and the integral. So what we did in part three, which was find the integral for the heat capacity as it changes dependent on temperature and temperature changing. And just that's something I want to point out before I code this out is I changed this because I, I had written lowercase e for both of these spots from what Wolfram Alpha had put back in part three of the video, but it's not Euler's number, it's it's the coefficient e, and Wolfram Alpha just assumed that I'm, what I meant to do was lowercase e, and so that's what they took the integral of, but it's not that, it's, um, it's our coefficient e, and so those are just the two things I swapped and edited out from uh, what I wrote down previously in part three, so we're actually just taking the coefficient for e. So now with that said, let's go ahead and define our function here. And so we'll go ahead and say, we'll call it the, uh, when we take the integral, the integral for heat capacity, and it is with respect to our temperature. And so now what we need to return is uh, our, our result, our integral. What is the integral for uh, chem CAD equation 107? Well, we wrote that out right here. And so let's just go ahead and put this in to our code. So it's going to be the heat capacity of coefficient A multiplied by our change in temperature plus our heat capacity for coefficient B um, or the, the properties of coefficient B regarding and how that interacts with our heat capacity for each respective element. And that is also then going to be multiplied by our coefficient C, and that will be divided by the hyperbolic tangent of um, C, over, C over temperature. Now, we're going to need to bring that minus out because the D is a coefficient that is being multiplied across as a constant, so we'll bring that negative out and we'll multiply that by coefficient e multiplied by our hyperbolic tangent and within that we have our coefficient e divided by our temperature there we go Okay, uh, one more thing to note, I'll go ahead and specify here, is that this is in joules per mole. And so this is giving us just uh, joules per every one mole, so our, our heat of formation there, 74,000 joules per mole for the exothermic reaction at that heat of formation for methane. But here, this ChemCAD equation, if we recall from part three, it was actually put in kilograms, uh, not kilograms, um, kilomoles. And so what we need to do to get these to factor back together is divide this by a thousand. And so that'll get us back to our moles because we don't want to leave it in kilomoles. So let's go ahead and divide that by a thousand. Okay, now we need to define one more function before moving forward with our root solver and that is going to be defining our enthalpy and our change in enthalpy with respect to temperature and so what this is going to need to put back for us is what is our heat of formation for each of our our, our, our reactants coming in and then what is the um, <coughs> what is the enthalpy or the, the heat capacity, how did the heat capacity change at whatever respective temperature it was? And then the difference of that from 
its starting point with the heat capacity at 298 Kelvins. Here we go. Okay, and accept that. And then, so now we're going to be able to move forward from there. But before moving on, let's see. I should put, just to be good, let's take those parentheses out, those are unnecessary. Okay, so now, let's rerun that. Now our next step <clears throat> is to be concerned with uh, bringing in our stoichio stoichiometry that we took balanced out in part one of this video series and concern ourselves with the number of carbons and hydrogens that are gonna be coming in to our system and, and into the Bunsen burner and, and reacting. And that'll help us also be able to track what comes in, what comes out. So let's go ahead and see regarding our number of moles that are coming in for our fuel and, and how the ratio of carbons and hydrogens is dispersed out based off of our composition of our fuel. And so our, our fuel is, uh, in array values, let's see, it's going to be our, uh, we've got, what's your point? Well, we've got 95% methane. We have 4% of our ethane, and then we have 1% of our propane. Okay, there we go. Did you accept that? Um, there's a brackets in there. Okay, there we go, so now Let's get under here. We'll need to put in our excess air, which the, we define to be 20%. Okay, so now is where we're gonna try and figure out the way stuff of our composition of our fuel, which we just defined in N fuel, is we need to go ahead and say, well, what is the what is the ratio of carbons to hydrogens per uh, compound that is being brought into the equation. So with uh, methane, that's uh, CH4. So it's one carbon and four hydrogens. For ethane, it's going to be two carbons and six hydrogens. And lastly, for propane, at only 1% of propane, but it's going to be three carbons and eight hydrogens. There we go. Okay. So now with that, in order to figure out how to uh, unpack the, based off the percentages of the, uh, the different fuel products for ethane, methane, ethane, and propane, and then the amount of carbon to hydrogen ratio that each has, how do we solve for the amount of carbons and hydrogens coming in? Well, if we just do a matrix multiplication of the two, uh, then that will get us to where we want to get because it'll it'll just leave us with our our carbons summed up and our hydrogens summed up in their exact amount. So let's go ahead and set this as number of carbons, number of hydrogens, and this is going to equal the matrix multiplication between our N fuel and our fuel CH and now let's go ahead and look at our stoichiom uh, stoichiometry to see uh, how we want to balance this out for each of the variables. So for our number of CO2, carbon dioxide that's gonna be coming in, well, that is just gonna be equal to, oh, I can look straight ahead at the, um, the amount of carbons that came in. So we got a one-to-one -one ratio there for our water, that will equal, that's going to equal our number of hydrogens divided by two, however many hydrogens are being brought in, for our number of oxygens, for O2, that will equal the number of, height of water divided by two, but not just that, let's see. Also, the amount of carbon dioxide that are produced. And then 
that multiplied by any excess air. that is brought into our Bunsen burner. And in this case, we're defining it as 20%. And then our hydrogen, or nitrogen that will be produced, that's coming in and coming out, it's a 79 to 21 ratio multiplied by however many oxygens come in. There we go. And so we'll go ahead and move forward to our next step now. What we're going to do to wrap this up and to finalize this is use our root solver to get to the final temperature that our flame will be at when the enthalpy coming in equals the enthalpy coming out. We're going to combine our arrays, our, our vector of arrays, and concatenate them together because they're both uh, just values of arrays here. So let's go ahead and do that for all the, the moles coming in. The number of moles coming in, we'll, we'll label that as NN, and we'll go ahead and concat con concatenate that. And so what, what do we have coming in? Well, we have our N fuel, and we have our array of what else is coming in? Well, we have our Um, air, so, well, our air. And so, what is in the air? Well, the air is going to be our oxygen, our nitrogen, and we don't have any carbon dioxide coming in. That is going to be a product, not a reactant. And we don't have any water coming in. That is also going to be a product, not a reactant. Then let's go ahead and say the number most coming out. What is coming out is going to be oops, here we go. What is coming out is going to be our oxygen. Oh, let's see, our fuel, but our fuel is getting burned up. Our methane and our propane methane, ethane, and propane are all getting burned up. And then so that we can just say is zero coming out. And then our oxygen times any excess air. And then our nitrogen. And this time we do have carbon dioxide being produced. And we do have water being produced. There we go. Let's go ahead and run that. And now what we're going to be able to do is solve our, or define our root solver function, so then we can we can get to our what our root is to our find our final temperature. For our home stretch, then what we're going to do is define our root solver, and that's going to then allow us now to find the exact temperature that the flame will be at when when we'll be in a steady state situation with the enthalpy coming in equaling the enthalpy coming out. So we'll go ahead and define our equations or define our root solver and we'll call it equations. And the root solver takes in a vector of arrays and our temperature is going to be equaling each, uh, we wanna see what the temperature is for uh, the values along the vector. Now when we ask what is it gonna be returning, what do we wanna know? Well, we're concerned with the, the product between the enthalpy and for, for what's coming in, the enthalpy and the product of the reactants coming in, and, and then the sum of those together. And then on the back end of the equation, or of our system with our Bunsen burner and our adiabatic situation here, uh, is going to be the product between the enthalpy and the products coming and leaving the situation. And so the way we get to that is through the dot product, right? So the enthalpy multiplied by each of the reactants and then those summed up. And then what we're concerned with is what is the difference between what's coming in with the enthalpy, the dot product between the enthalpy and the reactants and then what is, uh, or what is going out and the difference from that between what has come into the system. And that, that's what we're concerned with here. So let's go ahead and put that in now. So we've got our dot product between what? Well, it's gonna be between the enthalpy uh, at whatever respective temperature is going to be 
and the number of moles going out because that's going to be that's going to sum up what is the enthalpy the dot product between the enthalpy and the number of moles going out and that minus the dot product between our enthalpy at specifically at 298 kelvins and the number of moles that have come into the situation here we go and I think there we have it. Okay. And then the last thing to do is just to run our root solver, which is our function that we just defined and an initial guess. Let's see if we're starting off at 290 Kelvin, let's go ahead and say 1500 Kelvin as an initial guess. And if all goes well, what we're concerned with, well, here, we'll go ahead and leave this out for a second. Let's just go ahead and see if this works. This is solution converged right here. This is the final temperature that the flame will be at in Kelvins when the enthalpy coming in equals the enthalpy coming out. So it's 2,063.7476 Kelvins. And really, if we're only concerned with that last value, we can say this. So our four-part series has led to being able to solve for the flame of the temperature that is an adiabatic flame temperature in a steady state situation where the enthalpy coming in equals the enthalpy coming out. And here we have it at 2,063.75 Kelvins. Thank you for watching.